So this is a joint work with uh, Yannick Prier and, uh, and uh, Pierre-Antoine Champin, who are both working at uh, uh, LIRIS the, at the University of Lyon. So first of all, I will, uh, I will explain some of the uh, terminology in, in the titles. So uh, what is an interaction trace? So in fact, it consists uh, of a temporally situated recording of observed elements. Uh, which we are going to call opcells, and opcells are elements observed during the interaction of an end user with a given application. So uh, you design the application such that you can kind of record uh, some or all the uh, interaction the user can perform on this application. So within this domain, this field, uh, they are calling trace-based uh, management system, TBMS, uh, all the operations related to uh, the acquisition, the uh, storage, the management of tra trace, uh, traces or interaction traces. And uh, they also have a, a notion of uh, reasoning which they are, and uh, the component which is uh, performing these operations is, is called a TBR, trace-based reasoning. So what is the motivation of this, of this work? In fact, uh, in fact it's uh, like given a set of interaction traces, that you, you got from interactions uh, of the end user on the application. Can you assist the personalization of the user interface? Can you adapt it kind of automatically? Can you enrich uh, the user experience? And also, can you improve the efficiency of the application? So uh, is it possible to uh, do that automatically just from the interactions? In fact, uh, our approach shows, shows that it is. and. Uh, what is the approach that we, uh, we have used? Uh, we are providing semantics to the interaction, interaction traces, uh, which is something that the, uh, the community of uh, traces are, is not providing usually. Uh, all their reasoning are kind of hard coded and they have no semantics. So uh, it's a kind of a, a first step into uh, providing semantics to uh, traces. And uh, we provide a declarative logic based, which is uh, based on uh, description logics. It deals with uncertainty because we are not sure that everything we are going to, to propose to the end user or to the uh, administrator of the application are going to be relevant. And uh, we also would like to, uh, to have a plug-in kind of uh, system based on ontology, so we have modular ontologies. The use case that we are, uh, we are using on the paper is based on the data cleaning medical application, which, which really fits into this domain, but we believe that uh, other domains are applicable. So now I will just show kind of uh, the, uh, an overview of the architecture. So uh, the first arrow there, you see that you have the application. Uh, you have a screen of the application, and uh, mainly on the data cleaning application. It means that we have healthcare professionals who are going to uh, interact with it to uh, add some new data, to remove data, to update data, or just to retrieve data to consult them. And uh, the second arrow that means that we are, they are going to interact with the, the database. For example, it can be a, a symptoms uh, database or a, a database about drugs. So the arrow with the other biggest component on the far right, upper right, is the interaction traces module. Uh, the, the arrow three um, shows that we have interaction traces. So we are going to store everything about these interactions. So we are going to store them into the interaction traces module. But also, we are going to interact with the arrow number four with a set of ontologies. We have a set of mappings which are going to relate all the things that the user is going to interact with on the graphical user interface with the uh, interaction traces and the ontologies. So the lower right block, uh, we will see that uh, given these mappings and the interaction traces, traces and the uh, ontologies, we are going to design a, a graph of um, uh, kind of all the interaction traces we can record. And then with arrow six, we can send that to a reasoner, which is going to uh, provide us with some feedback and to uh, provide some generalization maybe of uh, observed elements, uh, objects, or uh, traces. So this, uh, the result of this reasoning is going with uh, arrow number seven to uh, the interaction traces, because all the transform traces, we are also going to store them. Finally, the last arrow is the number eight on the upper left. And uh, we have a module, uh, admin module, which enables uh, the, the persons who uh, handles, uh, manages the application 
to, uh, to try to know if uh, he has the right number of uh, healthcare professionals uh, dealing with the application, if someone is missing, if, for example, no one is updating uh, um, uh, drugs related to uh, homeopathy, for example, or uh, some uh, therapeutic classes or things like that. So he's going to ask questions and to ask uh, uh, things that are going to be inferred. So here is the, the overview of the ontology distribution. We have a set of four ontologies that are quite simple, at least the, the, the one which can be the biggest is the uh, domain-specific ontology, but I will start with the uh, general trace ontology. It's the, uh, 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 an ontology uh, consisting of uh, only three concepts and uh, uh, five or six properties, and we see that the concepts are related to uh, the notion of a trace of a subject uh, the agent who is going to perform the interaction traces. And we also have upsells. So that's about it. We can see that uh, we have an ID for a subject and that uh, we are interested in uh, temporal information, like when an upsell is being observed, when it's performed. And also we have the notion, the notion of a session, when a user starts a session and when it ends the session. So then on the right, we have a trace generic ontology. And this is related to the kind of operations that we are interested in. So for this example, we are only interested in CRUD operations. It means that what are the kind of operations that are being retrieved and some modification operations, like uh, updating, deleting, or creating. For each of them, we are interested in the, oper uh, the, um, the, val the new values or the old values. Then I will just uh, go to the lower uh, ontology and get back to the, the one on the right. Uh, the domain-specific ontology is the one dedicated to your domain application. So for this example, it's related to, uh, the, uh, to healthcare problems and uh, especially to uh, drugs. So we have concept about drugs, about uh, the form of a drug, whether it's uh, allotherapy, uh, phytotherapy, homeopathy, or other things. For this example, we have a therapeutic class and we also have side effects, contraindications, molecules, and uh, we can have interactions and uh, many other things. We see that there is a mapping between the trace generic ontology and the domain specific ontology uh, due to the domain trace bridge ontology. It relates uh, uh, concepts from the domain specific ontology to uh, concepts of the trace generic ontology. And it's also quite simple. So this, this kind of organization of ontologies enables to, uh, for you to just plug, plug in a domain-specific ontology. And if you're interested in new operation, like, uh, for example, uh, copy and paste, you can modify the trace generic ontology. And the uh, general uh, ontology and the bridge ontology are going to, be, to stay the same. So what kind of operation, uh, what kind of graphs can we have? So we have designed a, a model for traces, for example, on the uh, upper, upper uh, part of this figure, we can see that uh, we have a first block and it's the uh, kind of a, uh, the schema of a table for uh, traces. We have an identification for a trace, we have a user identification and two dates for the start and the end of the station. And then of the lower uh, box, we have all operations uh, consisting of uh, interaction traces and all the upsells. So with that, we can create a whole graph which is typed because, we, because of the mapping with the ontologies. So what is interesting is that on the, uh, on, you have a box, a dotted box on the right, and uh, these information are coming from some external, some external knowledge. So for example, we do not know that a drug with uh, such an identifier is being uh, is, being, uh, is containing a paracetamol or is an antipyretic therapeutic class. So this is, these are things that we are adding. So now we have, in terms of interactions with the system, not the traces, we have five different levels. We are interested in uh, what kind of fields is being accessed by the system. And uh, mainly at this step, it's a model checking. We are only uh, expressing some SQL queries or Sparkle queries, and then we get a reply. The last four levels are related to uh, model checking, like uh, query answering, or also to reasoning. Uh, there are the object level, where for the reasoning, we can generalize on a given object description. 
For the upsell level, we can generalize on upsells that have been uh, recorded. For the trace level, we can generalize on interaction traces. And at the subject level, we can define a user profile. For example, if someone is, um, is interacting a lot with the system, we can try to profile him, saying this person is uh, specified in such therapeutic classes and is, is good for this kind of drugs because this is what he modifies, deletes, or inserts in the database. So associated to that, we provided three reasoning uh, solutions, the uh, alg uh, algorithms, uh, uh, just sketch them here. We have a simplified um, um, MSC, which stands for a more specific concept. So uh, this is used for the object and upsell levels. And uh, for example, with that, you can, you can um, uh, provide some generalization of, uh, of object and upsells. At the next level, we have a probabilistic uh, list concept com uh, subsummer, which uh, both MSC and LCS are non-standard description logic uh, uh, inferences. At this level, we approximate uh, using probabilis probabilities uh, and given and using the, sim the result of uh, the simplified MSC, we are generating a, a definition for traces. Uh, finally, at the set probabilistic concept, we are using uh, the probabilistic LCS with some probabilities, we have a threshold, and everything that is above this threshold, we are going to, uh, to uh, create a, a DL concept. And such, with this approach, we can uh, uh, type a user, uh, provide a user profile to, uh, to uh, a user, uh, end user of the application. So for conclusion, we, we run an evaluation, and we found out that this is maybe quite useful for the end user. For example, we are only going to show him the kind of drugs that he's uh, good at for modification or insertion. Uh, it's also good for the developers. It's an extra work where we design the application, but once it's there, the system is going to update kind of automatically to change the, uh, the kind of drugs one is supposed to check. And also for the staff manager, one can see that uh, he's lacking some healthcare professionals to uh, maintain his database well. So in terms of evaluation, we, uh, we, um, we studied the gain in productivity with the end user to uh, have two groups and to, to see if somewhere uh, really finding that the system was improving. And also we kind of showed them their profiles uh, and asked them if they thought that that was correct or not. So in terms of future work, uh, uh, we would like to study the impact of uh, such application on other applications which are not specially related to uh, data cleaning. And uh, we would like to uh, also investigate the collaboration with uh, strict TBR, uh, which we, we are not uh, uh, studying in this system, with our, with our ontology-based application. And uh, kind of mixing the two kinds of reasoning, we think that we can get some new features and functionalities for the system. So that's it. Thanks. for the ontology, and uh, we are running an approximation. Uh, probabilistic uh, LCS approximates uh, a concept that we are going to, uh, to retrieve. So it's an approximation. Yeah, but you build the, um, the MC, and then the LCS is uh, computing uh, uh, not on the ground of the ontology, it's uh, an only a probabilistic approximation yes. that you build uh, so how do you compute uh, we, we get the information. We kind of uh, um, count the kind of entries we have for such an operation. And, uh, and uh, for example, if someone is, uh, 
He's uh, accessing some drugs. He has accessed 100 drugs for during a session, and uh, 50 of them are related to uh, this kind of symptoms. It's going to be 50 under uh, 100, and then we're going to uh, get them, and we are going to sum the probabilities. Yes, yes. One uh, related to, to the definition of these pressures. I mean, do you have some kind of guidance or uh, um, specification on how to set them? So oh, does oh. The, the, the pressure that you mentioned here in the when you set the, the probability concept. I mean, when you decide whether uh, the concept you assign, basically, according to the, the probabilistic value. Yes. Are there, I mean, how do you set it? Which values do you use? Uh, does it depend on the application? Is it because you mentioned that it is predefined somehow? The first one? Yeah, the first No, it's, uh, we, we, we are still uh, kind of figuring out uh, which, which good value is, uh, is the best, but it's not, it's not really easy to find one. So it's more like uh, we are trying and see if uh, we consider that the profile is correct or not. And then we try to, uh, f to find the accurate value. Uh, we have no guidelines for our general application. We don't think that there is just one threshold, yeah, yeah. which is going to run for all kinds of applications. OK, thank you. Thanks.